President, I came across an article in the New York Times on Sunday, and it called my attention to the passing of an amazing man, a man which had a, who has a connection to the United States Senate. I rise today to pay my respect to a man of uncommon integrity. Dr. Erwin Schatz passed away on April 1st at the age of 83. Beloved, respected in the medical community, Dr. Schatz spent his career helping people. He was a major contributor to the Honolulu Heart Program, a landmark study with half a century of follow-up on Japanese-American men in Hawaii. Dr. Schatz was a rare critic of the notorious Tuskegee, Alabama syphilis medical experiments. From 1932 to 1972, the United States Public Health Service conducted the Tuskegee Cl Clinical Study on ed uneducated and poor African-American sharecroppers. They wanted to know about untreated syphilis on un African-Americans. 600 men were enrolled in the study. Almost two-thirds had syphilis while the, test, while the rest were used as control subjects. Between 1932 and 1947, the date when penicillin was determined to be the cure for the disease, at least seven men died and their wives, children, and untold number of others had been infected. Men participating in the study were told they were being treated for bad blood. Bad blood wasn't running in the veins of these men. It was running in the veins of those who decided this study was worth more than their humanity. Dr. Irwin Schatz was four years out of medical school working as a cardiologist in the Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit when he came across the December 1964 issue of the journal Archives of Internal Medicine, which mentioned the Tuskegee study. We cannot be sure how many other people read this issue, but Dr. Schatz read it, and he was horrified. Dr. Schatz wrote to the study's senior author, Dr. Donald Rockwell. His letter was only three sentences long. These three sentences could have put his career at risk. Here was this young doctor criticizing an investigation overseen by some of the leading figures in the American Public Health Service. Here's what he wrote. I am utterly astounded by the fact that physicians allow patients with potentially fatal diseases to remain untreated when effective therapy is available. I assume you feel the information which is extracted from the observations of this untreated group is worth their sacrifice. If this is the case, then I suggest the United States Public Health Service and those physicians associated with it in this study need to reevaluate their moral judgment in this regard. The sad reality is the Center for Disease Control and Prevention buried Dr. Schatz's letter, and it would sit in their archives until 1972. Wall Street Journal reporter found the letter, the same year the health service employee turned whistleblower Peter Buxton told the world about this horrific study. Dr. Schatz went on to serve in a variety of hospitals. In 1975, he joined the University of Hawaii and eventually became chairman of their Department of Medicine. In 2009, he was named a medical hero by the Mayo Clinic because of his career, but also because of the moral fury he expressed in that three-sentence letter. Erwin Schatz was truly a hero. My prayers and thoughts go out to his sons, Jacob, Edward, Stephen, and our colleague, Senator Brian Schatz, his nine grandchildren, and his family.